Before this video starts, I would like to quickly ask you guys to uh, consider subscribing. It really helps out this channel, and I've been getting so much love and support lately. Uh, I would really like to continue this uh, trend, and really do consider subscribing if you like anything about this video. If you like the way I forecast, if you like the video, um, you know, leave a comment, drop a like, possibly consider subscribing when you feel is appropriate. Thank you so much for watching, and let's go on with the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Okay, um, today's video is going to be an update on <clears throat> the long range pattern, the long range update. And since it is a long range update, I don't need the, you know, the, the finest details because it's far out. So by model to model uh, run, it doesn't change that greatly. So what I'm meaning by that, what I'm trying to say is that this is getting recorded on Friday and this will get uploaded Saturday morning, something like 11 o'clock or 12. So that's my reasoning as to as to why uh, this is getting recorded earlier with no really need to record it and upload it right away because information is still going to be valid. And I'm telling you guys, I'm so excited because what I forecasted for August and what I was predicting for fall is going to be basically got determined by this pattern. So this pattern is most likely to stick into the beginning of August. Um, as up until August, I would rather say, the rest of July seems to be in between warm, a little bit cooler, um, not nothing hot really. Um, but then it's supposed to cool off quite a bit. And, and that pattern could be very chilly and could hold in for quite a while into mid to late August possibly if the, and if the whole and I'll do a video why this pattern change could be you know um, meaning a very chilly winter and fall possibly so um, I you know that's what I just wanted to uh, say but as of now today's video is just going to be about the the pattern change and what to expect not what the impacts are of it in the long term so um let's go back to our six uh you know it's a long term but let's look at the short term as well we have um nothing remarkable in terms of the weather in terms of the precip we have a couple of cold fronts and this cold front will actually bring quite a good dose of cooler air notice how if you go to two meter temperature anomalies um anomaly there is a cool batch of air and you could tell uh, uh, tell that based on looking at MSL and precip, MSLP and precip just by looking at the pressure lines. But you could see chilly air for a good uh, portion of the country this weekend. And notice how we start, go back, and this, this is basically starts on Monday. And as we go forward, this continues through Tuesday, Wednesday. And I'm not saying the whole country. I mean, you could see the west, the mountains in the west could be you know, <clears throat> above average. Also, parts of the northeast could be above average. But uh, a good chunk of the central part of the country is going to be chilly. Indiana, Iowa, Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, parts of North Dakota and South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. However, this shifts a little bit further down into um, the east as uh, you can see as we go on into later Friday and Saturday. And this cold wave, if you want to call it, isn't going to be reinforced quite a while. It's kind of going to be stuck. So basically what's going to happen, basically what's going to happen is this thing is going to go down. Uh, let's use a different color, shall we? Let's use something like green. So this thing is going to go down. Okay, so this uh, this pressure, this high pressure is going to go down and it's going to sit right there while... Um, uh, more revolving air around it keeps it in trap. You can see this warm, hot air, it keeps it stuck. And this war uh, cooler air doesn't really have anywhere to go. Can't go here, can't go there. Uh, can't really go off in the ocean because there's another, the Bermuda High is just spinning and uh, kicking in quite a bit of, um, of warm air. That's why this, it's kind of like a ring of fire pattern, but around a cool area of, 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 uh, of temperatures and that's why it's gonna be pretty chilly for a good chunk of the country before um, another reinforcing shot of air and I apologize this is not loading that quick but we'll have to do with what we have notice how Sunday Monday this is now already August 5th so not next Monday this upcoming Monday or the I think this is okay wait okay so it's the Monday in uh, in a week from now and today's Friday so the next Monday you could see that new um, we could see a reinforcing shot of cooler air and this one extends further into the Northeast into parts of New York New Hampshire Vermont Jermaine Massachusetts Pennsylvania West Virginia all those areas and you could see that the model run ends right here so let's go to a, a one that has a full model 
um, run. Now let's go to 2 hours 64 since that's where we ended off. And uh, we could see that if we go forward, this model run also has the same thing. This, ha this isn't just one model run. It's been repeating itself uh, over and over. And you can see by the end, possibly a, a very, very chilly um, pattern going forward. You can see cooler air going across a good portion of the north and the east. And notice how that intensifies. So, um... You may be wondering what are the other models showing. Let's go to the ECMWF, also known as a European model, and let's see what it has to say. So we could go um, or see that by if we go to 500 millibar height anomaly, geopotential height, and that is basically showing us where the troughs and the ridges are going to form. And notice how we start getting into this high pressure, or sorry, this European model also is showing this chilly air. And it's not just by these colors. That doesn't really show the chilly air or... A warm air it's more of where uh, the, these lines set up so you can see how notice how the pressure line pressures are going like this right there and that is around this base of high pressure that's producing quite a bit of warm air across this part of the country that's why the west will be warmer but notice how these bars are going like that that indicates that the cool air is able to rush in and fill in a good portion of the eastern part of the United States and that is what the European model is showing in agreement with the yeah, with the GFS model and now if you want even further data proofing of this let's look at the GEFS model the uh, the ensembles of the G uh, GFS and you can see let's go back to our four let's, let's go back to our 74 and you can see this is this the GF GEFS ensembles aren't showing that big of a pattern yet. Still already seeing a chilly flow for the northeast and upper parts of the country, but then look, it just in intensifies and possibly seeing a classic um, cold potential outbreak pattern. Um, this you you usually see these in the winter, you know when we when you're expecting a polar vortex to come across, but this time it's during the summer, and you can see that it continues there for a while, and these temperatures just continue sliding in and if you're uh wondering you know is does this actually translate to the temperature anomalies yes yes it does if we go to two meter five uh day average temperature anomalies look at this um this is okay so this is sunday monday august 5th tuesday you can see the chill remains and it doesn't really seem bothered by anything um the the warm though the warmth it could be a bit uh above average here across the west but overall here in the east looks fairly cool and uh it looks like a lot of models are agreeing on this not just one or two so let's go to let's stick at the ensembles and let's just go to the i think they have two meter temperature shaded yes they do so let's see this actually shows us um what the actual temperatures will be at what given time um and you know the actual temperatures are readings not wind chill not anomalies basically just actual temperature notice how it gets warm but None of them are showing really hot temperatures as there's going to be that cool off already in effect. And notice how there's actually 70s and 80s, which this is, I'm telling you, this is around average, maybe a little bit cooler. Uh, a little bit warmer, obviously, around the Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas area, but generally average. But then notice how this cool push of air brings th things down pretty drastically. Notice how it's there's 70s across Wisconsin, 70s across Minnesota. 70 across Illinois, uh, and this is below average now, and this continues for quite a good chunk. Notice how during the nights it gets down into the 50s, uh, possibly some 40s right there, 51, 40, uh, 49 right there by the UP of Michigan. So pretty chilly nights possible, and this is July 31st, so you know, um, it's, you know, it should be warm, but again, this just goes to show you the power of this cool off. Notice how it's still cool in these areas. It's starting to get warm here and in the west, but it's still chilly across the east. And the GFS models are showing that it remains chilly for a good portion of the time. And uh, that's that's what they're showing right now. And the G GFS is agreeing, the European model is agreeing. Canadian model I typically don't like using the temperatures because it's all over the place. And you can see uh, it's not really agreeing, but again, that model is so... Um, so, I would say, crazy that it doesn't really uh, matter too much. I mean, it, if we look at the temperature anomalies, it's showing com something completely different from what the other ones are showing. You can see some cold in the west, some cold in the east, but it's really sporadic, and it's, it's I just don't like using the Canadian model.
the GFS Legacy, the old year, uh, or the old uh, GFS model, you can see, also shows uh, the chill in the air, um, and you can see there's some uh, some big temperature contrast right there, and some cool anomalies. Still warm in the west, though. However, pretty chilly in the east, so that's something to keep an eye on for. And basically that's it guys for today's video, I'd just like to thank you um, for watching, consider liking this video, consider subscribing to this channel, um, consider watching, or consider liking the video, and uh, as always I'll see you guys in the next episode, see ya, bye.